Oh, when I was in a plane, I have to hold on in the ions. So that's why I have two, I have like three pen mark from here and here and here. So I have it like pen marks from the plane. start to be homeless 2011 was too hard because every every single day you have to uh, to realize where you're gonna sleep where you're gonna eat if somebody's homeless it's difficult because he's by himself in the street he can't do nothing he can be bullied in the street he can be killed in the street it can have something can happen to the to him in the street no one's gonna be watching so that's why you say if someone is in the street it's difficult because you eat in the in the dustbin you, you sleep in a crash, you, your blanket that dirty, your clothes that dirty, everything is you dirty. So for me, I would thought like, if I'm gonna end up like this, I don't want to see my dreams in my life end up like this until I become an old man. And after that, I die. It's better to die trying. I used to collect magazines in airport, so I used to get like magazines when we are sleeping in the way we are sleeping for homeless. In the night, I used to read these magazines. When I read that book, everything just come out from there. I saw everything from that book. From there, I know it. Okay, our option, our opportunity is only this to do it, to fly out in this country. We just organize the 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 the, the day of that night. We say this day is gonna be this last day for us to live. And so when we start to leave, we destroy everything that we had in that camp. We destroy it like blanket, we destroy everything that we had. After that, we say, if we destroy this, we're not coming back. We're going there to do what we're going to do to leave. So we just take our chances and left. So you climbed inside the wheel of the plane? Yeah. There you can't just like go in the same time and just walk straight away to the, to the plane. You can't do that because they can see you and you can be arrested as well. So definitely when we stand, stand like that, I know it's that it seems like it's my target so I can be able to go to do what I have to do. So I can go there straight and step to the wheels and climb over until inside. That's how it is. It was simple, but it was dangerous. But for me and Kalito, it, it seems like it was a piece of a cake, you know? So you're in the plane now? Yeah. How did you... Oh, when I was in a plane, I have to hold on in the ions. So that's why I have two, I have like three pen mark from here and here and here. So I have it like pen marks from the plane. So I have to stick myself, hold the ions to make sure I'm not falling out. But for my friend, I don't know exactly uh, what he did because he was sitting next to me to the right side. So we have just been divided by the wheel because the wheel, when it comes in, you have to divide us by two. Kaliti is going to be that side, me, I'm going to be this side. So what was, it, what was it like when the plane took off? Oh, when the plane took off, uh, the fear was not there because me, I was feeling in present, you know, I was feeling present, say, yeah. Kaliti said to me, yes, we made it. It was only the last, last words for him to say that, you know. It was the last words for him to say that, say, when, when we say he made it. I was like, oh, yeah, we made it, yeah. Even me, I was so excited because the plane, he just left without any problem in the floor, like security to come and stop the plane or maybe to be being spot, maybe climbing over to the plane. No, nothing did happen. When I'm in there, I can see some houses. I can see some cars down there. Because when it goes up, you have to go like this. So when it goes up, it gives you a big view. You can see, you can see all the places down there. I remember just there all the time, Carlito said to me, we made it. I said to him, yes, after it pass out with oxygen. And where did you fall? When you fell out of the plane, where did you land? I fell out in a landing gear. The plane was still like floating to come down. So when I come out there, it means I come out with the speed of the plane. 
Uh, when I fell, there is about like, it can be like 10 or to 10 to 20 feet. I remember when the plane comes in, hit, it opens, I fell out. When I fell out, I hit the floor. When I hit the floor, I start to wake up. But when I wake up, I see two people that were coming. They said, hey, check this guy, jump out in the plane. I was like, maybe I'm just dreaming. Maybe I'm still inside in the plane, I just have this dream. No, it was not a dream, it was a real thing, because these two guys, they just come and pick me up. I, I saw them when they picked me up. And I was like, oh, it's, it's happening, because I fell out in the plane. I said, oh, it did happen. When they come to me, they carry me up, they carry me up, they take me to the hospital. They try to help me for for my body to come back because they were like putting some heaters. I was I was, I was like frozen, they, like frozen. My body was frozen because my blood was not uh, circ circ circulating, was not circulating. So they have to put like heaters to to make me comfortable so my body can heat up. It can heat up so like, my blood my blood can start to work. I stayed there like about six months coma. After that, when I wake up. I can't move, I can't do nothing. I was like stable, I was like, I can't do nothing. I can't take the bath, they have to put me in the bed. I was like, oh my God, yes, I can see what's happening to me, you know? But I'm just glad because I'm alive, you know? They show me a passport for Kalito. Say, you know, you know this guy, I say, yeah, I know him. They show me a passport, I say, yeah, I know him. I say, he never make it, he never make it. But I say, how? He say, he fall on top of the building. So I didn't know what did happen to him. No matter when he fell out, I was already passed out with the oxygen. I never seen nothing. I'm feeling guilty because me and him were just came from Africa to look, come here to look for 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 surviving, for to make a better future. I can say now I'm very very uh, sad for him because he died in a long way of the long way journey from Johannesburg to Heathrow. He never make it. But I wish if he was here today, maybe something was gonna be different because. This was going to maybe, it was going to be a day for our best day in our life. And where are you, what's going on today? Where, where are you in the UK and what are you doing? Oh, uh, now I'm in Liverpool. So far, so far, uh, my life is quite, it's, it's not like perfect. I have to take what I can get, but as long as I can breathe, I can survive, I can live, I can eat. That's it. That's why I'm expecting on it. I did not get any help, you know. Until this year, until this year, I met some uh, like f f uh, like few people that want to come to help me. Some of them they just show up, and after that you never see them uh, see them uh, anymore again. So only I have only one guy now. He's like trying to help me in my in my situation, how I live, you know. Tell me, who who is this guy? Uh, Gabriel. Yeah, what's up, man? Good, man. Good, man. Good, man. So, Gabriel, tell me, how did you meet Samba? So, it was, I think it was just a, co it was a cold day, and then I've just seen him outside yeah. Tesco, and I just said to him, oh, you good, bro? Do you want anything from inside? He told me, get me a coffee, and I think he said ham and cheese sandwich. So, I went in there, I got him the stuff, and I just gave it to him. I just went about my day, I didn't think anything of it. And then maybe two or three days later, my sister sent me the article from the Daily Mail of Temba. And I was looking at it, racking my brain for maybe a few days, thinking, where do I know this guy? Where have I seen his face before? It was driving me mad. And then I kept looking back through the article and I basically saw, OK, he's living in Liverpool now. So I put two and two together and realised he's a guy I saw outside Tesco two days earlier. So I said to all my friends, I said, I'm going to change this guy's life. I'm going to find him. I was driving back home with my friend and I saw him on the main road and I said to him, oh, that's him. So I turned the car around, I pulled up on him, honked the horn, I told him, get in, bro. Um, we went to Audi, I bought him a bunch of food, yeah, toiletries. Shopping, 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 yeah. Just some, any stuff that I thought, cool, he'll need this, this will help him live a better life. And then he took, because obviously he can't carry the bags, so he got out the car, I got the bags, we went into his house and obviously, well, his house, and obviously when I saw the way he was living, I just thought, no matter what amount of food or clothes I give this guy, it's not going to change his life, unfortunately. So I told him, cool, stay here, bro. I'm going to come back tomorrow. Um, the next day I came back, took him to mine, got him a haircut, some new clothes, showered. And then, yeah, from then, we've just been trying to do what we can to make his life better, I guess. Samba, what's it? how does it feel to have 
support and, and friendship yeah yeah, for me, that friendship, for me, it look it, it feels something like it's alive, you know, because I can feel it in my heart. So this guy just make his own move movement without, like, nothing stopping him, you know, just to come and help me, you know. Do you guys have plans going forward? How else do you think you can help him? Well, for me, the number one plan is to get him somewhere permanent, a nice roof over his head where he can wake up in the morning, feel good, shower and start his day right obviously he wants to do college he wants to learn to speak english he wants to do courses and in his current situation now i know i wouldn't be able to focus in that environment so yeah the main aim is to get him somewhere where he can live and feel comfortable and feel safe there are people out here who have had a bad set of cards dealt to them and they do deserve a blessing, so yeah, when you see someone on the street or when you see someone, don't always neglect them. Take some time to actually find out who they are and you never know, maybe you'll be able to change their life too. I want the God to look after after this guy as well because this guy is decent and he's, he's, he, he do it from his, to his heart, you know? He do it from his heart. You can see, guys like this one, they need to be trusted from the eyes of their God because they do it with, with their heart. They don't do it with the uh, dodgy, you know, they don't play the dodgy thing. <laughs> yeah, they don't play the dodgy <laughs> thing, man. And then literally, uh, my nerves just went, Mandy, break right! And I, I slammed my throttle fully forward really quickly. I just rolled to 120 degrees. I pulled really, really hard towards the ground. He immediately started pumping out flares and they act as a decoy to the surface-to-air missile that had just launched and it had locked onto my engines. 